It's all too common that users often choose poor passwords. In this tutorial, we're going to explore and apply some of the integrated Django password validation features. So in Django, validation is controlled by the auth password validators setting. If you've started a new project in Django using the start project feature, then the settings file will have pre-configured the auth password validators. And you can see there are four of them. So the user attribute similarity validator, minimum length validator, the common password validator, and numeric password validator. So let's have a little look at the user attribute similarity validator. So this checks the similarity between the password and a set of attributes of the user. So let's go ahead and just define some of the options and then user attributes we want to check against. So here we're using the user attributes from the user model, the username, email, first name, and last name. So in fact, these are the default attributes that Django utilizes for user attribute similarity validation. But now we can actually extend this and apply the max similarity parameter. So let's first apply this parameter. So it's a max similarity, and this is a number between zero and one. So it works on a scale of zero to one. So zero being a reject all passwords, and one rejects only passwords that are identical to the attribute value. So let's just apply this to an example. Here we have the building the blog series authentication tutorial and we've just gone into the settings of the project and we're going to set the max similarity so the the core the settings we've got the max similarity at zero so i've already logged in as a user so i'm going to type in the old password and try and set a, a new password and because it's set to zero then we should receive a message so we've captured the error, new password two. The password is too similar to the username. So the fact being, if we use any password in any combination, the max similarity is zero. Therefore, we cannot change the password. So let's just adapt the number one. So I'm going to go ahead and just go into the user admin and just change, for example, the last name to something that we're going to use for a password. So let's go ahead and do that. So first I just change the first name of this user one to password check one, two, three, four. So let's go ahead and see if we can change it to that now. So user one is the password and then the new password, press submit. And there we have the password is too similar to the first name. So it also identifies within the error, the actual attribute that the password is too similar to. So for those who are following the build in the simple blog series, have just completed the authentication and looking at this video, you can see here that I've made some changes within the password change form here to capture the error as text. So whereas before we had text that was pre-written as the error text, we now have a dynamic text that we're utilizing Django's validation error text uh, to output what you've just seen on the screen. So although the Django documentation isn't explicit in how this works, this is a weighted system. So imagine you had a first name with 10 characters and you had this similarity, max similarity at 0.5. So 50% of your password shouldn't include text that's in your, for example, your first name. So we can make the assumption that's how it's working. So you're going to define this parameter how you see fit within your system. So next up is the minimum length validator, which really just is self-explanatory there, defining the minimum length of a password. So the default minimum length if I remember rightly, is eight characters. And of course we can change this in Django very easily. So moving down to the minimum length validator, you can see we have options here and the min length, we're just simply defining an integer here of 10. So the minimum length passwords now should be 10 characters. 
So next up, we have the common password validator. So here Django checks your password or the user's password against a list of 20,000 common passwords. So these passwords are actually stored in Django. And if you're using a virtual environment, for example, this is the VEMV folder, you're going to find these files, or sorry, you're gonna find these passwords zipped up in a file in this location. So you can see if you navigate to the path here, this is where Django is installed essentially inside the contrib or folder. You can see we have this um, archive here of common passwords. If I were to open this up, we're gonna see a list of common passwords. So this is what Django is utilizing to check your password or user's password against as poor passwords to use. So if we were to use any one of these passwords, we would receive an error. So let's just randomly select one and try and utilize it. So let's go back into the project and see if we can use this. So I type in the old password and I paste in the password that I've copied from that file, press submit. And it says this password is too common. So you can see the connectivity here, the error telling us that the password is too common based upon the list that we've just seen. So we can extend this list if we want to by adding our own list, but it probably seems wise to potentially just utilize this existing list and just extend from it. So add your own passwords to this common list. So finally, we have the numeric password validator, which essentially is exactly that. It's just going to check to ensure that the user doesn't use all numeric numbers for their password. So by default here, if we utilize this validator, users cannot use all numbers for their password. So there we have some of the integrated Django password validation features to manage passwords in Django. So as you might imagine, we do have the tools and facilities to extend and build our own validation features. And we'll have a look at that in a future tutorial.